Hello everyone, let's solve a very good graph problem today. In this problem we are given a graph with the root at node 0. We are also given a parent array where the value at a particular index represents the parent of that index node. For example, the value at index 1 and index 2 is 0. So node 0 is the parent of node 1 and 2. Similarly for index 3 and index 4, the parent value is 1. So node 1 is the parent of node 3 and 4. And we are also given that each node is labeled with a character. We are given a string to represent that. For example, index 0 has the character A. So node 0 will be labeled as A. Similarly, node 4 is labeled by character B. And given this tree, we have to find the longest path such that no adjacent nodes have the same label. For example, these two nodes have the same labels assigned to them, so they cannot be included in any path. Similarly, these two adjacent nodes have the same label, so they cannot be included in any path. And when we try out all the valid paths in this tree, this path will have the maximum length, hence the answer will be 3 nodes. Let's try to come up with an intuitive solution for this. Let's try to come up with a working solution using this example. We'll try to optimize it later. Let's try to find the maximum path for this node, where this node can be somewhere in the middle of this path. The path including this node can extend in any two of these three directions. So we have to find the maximum length of the path starting from these three nodes. Since all these three nodes are labeled differently than the parent, we can continue our search. For the first child, the maximum path will include these two nodes. So the maximum valid path starting at the first child will be of length 3. When we try to look for the maximum path for our second child, all its children are labeled the same. Hence the path will only include that node. Similarly, the maximum path for our third child will be of length 2. Since every path that includes our parent node can at most have two of its child subpaths, we have to take the greatest two of these three paths. Since we are also including the parent as one of the nodes in the path, we'll sum the length of these two child paths, add it to 1 and get our answer. Similarly, we'll find the length of the maximum path where this node will be the root. We see that all of its children have the same labels, so we cannot include any of them. Similarly, for this node, the length of the path for its left child will be 2 and the right child will be 1, so the maximum length of the path will be 4. Similarly, for this node, the length will be 2. So in this approach, we can repeat this process starting from each node and we'll check all the nodes in its subtree and we'll take the maximum two of such paths to find the answer when that node will be the root. We'll track the maximum of all the answers that we have seen. The time complexity of this would be O of n square. Let's try to optimize this by reducing some repetitive work. Let's try to find all the values that we should be calculating for this node. Let's take the case when this node will be a connecting node for the two paths starting at its child nodes. These will be the three paths that are possible. Since we are allowed to take only two of these paths, we'll take the maximum two of these three paths. So our answer will be 5. This node can also belong to a path where one of its ancestors can be the middle element for the paths formed by its subtrees. In this case, there will be a path connecting it to its ancestor. So we are actually looking for the longest path starting from this node. Hence, we have to take the maximum of these three child paths. And since we are also going to include this node, we are going to add one to find the longest path starting from it. Similarly, for these two child nodes, the maximum length of the paths starting from there will be 1 and 2 respectively. So now, out of these three child paths, we have to take the maximum 2. So the length of this path will be 6, when this node is one of the connecting nodes for its two child paths. So in this case, we'll do two things for each node. Firstly, we'll calculate the length of the longest path starting from it. And then, we'll also calculate the length of the path, when that node will be the connecting node for two of its child paths. Let's look at a complete example. We'll start from each leaf node and the length of the maximum path starting from there will be 1. And since they do not have any child nodes, the length of the paths where they will be the connecting nodes will be 1. Now we'll go to each of their parent nodes. These will be the maximum path starting from there. 
and since they have only one child node the length of the path when they will be the connecting nodes will be 2 and the length of the path starting from there will also be 2 now when we look at their parent nodes when we consider the first parent with label b it has three child nodes we have to take only two of them to find the maximum path where this will be the connecting node and the result will be 5 and this will be the longest path starting from this node for second node all its children have the same label so we cannot include any of them so the length of the path starting from it will be 1 for the third node two of its child nodes have the same label so we cannot include them so this will be the longest path starting from it and now finally we reach the root of this tree it has three child nodes so we'll be taking the maximum two of them so the maximum length of the path when this will be the connecting node for two of its child paths will be six this is the maximum that we have seen so far so we'll update our answer hence we can solve this recursively using a depth first search where we start at the top and for each node we find two values the length of the longest path starting from it and the length of the longest path where it will be the connecting node and our answer will be the length of the longest path when one of the nodes is the connecting node the time complexity of this would be o of n because we have to go through the nodes only once and the space complexity would be o of n because of a recursive call stack let's implement our solution the first thing that we'll do is to store all the children's for each node We'll use a hash map for that where the key will be the node and the value will be the list of all the children. Now we'll go through each entry in the parent array. The index will be the node ID and the value will be the parent ID. Since node 0 has its parent assigned to minus 1, we'll only consider parent values which are greater than or equal to 0. For each node and parent pair, we'll add an entry for the child node in the list corresponding to the parent. Since any path with only one node will be a valid path, our answer will at least be 1. Now we'll define a recursive function which takes the current node as an input parameter. We'll first make our result variable non-local so that it is available inside this function. Since for each node we only have to keep track of the two longest paths for its child nodes. To simplify our code, we'll keep an array where at most only three values will be stored. Since a node may not have any child nodes, we'll initialize this array with the top two as zero. Now we'll go through all the child nodes for our current node. And for each child node, we'll try to find the longest path starting from it. So we'll call the same DFS function on our child node. Since we can only include this child node in our path when the label assigned to it is different from the label assigned to our current node. In that case, we'll add it to the array which stores the maximum two paths for the child nodes. And since we only need to track the two maximum paths in it, we'll just reduce it to the two greatest values in it. To do that, we'll sort it in descending order and take the first two elements. Now we'll calculate the length of the path where our current node will be the connecting node. This will be the sum of the two values in our array and we'll also add one because our current node will also be included. We'll also try to maximize the result using this value. And now for our current node, we'll return the longest path starting from it. The length of the longest child path for this node will be at the 0th index of our array and we'll add 1 to it. Now we are done with our recursive function. Let's call it for the root node. Our answer will be stored in the result variable and we can directly return it. Let's submit our solution. You can see our solution is accepted. If this video was helpful, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more such content. Thanks for watching.